Use EQ where necessary to carve out space for your instrument and remove bad frequencies. Bad frequencies? What did they, they went to jail? What those frequencies did to you? They cheat on you? Why they're bad? This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge. May God be with you all. These techniques are guaranteed to work on every mix. This is what Instagram says. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixpress TV. Hope you're having a great day before we start. Check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, free plugins, discounts, and special offers. And if you want to support the channel, we have merch, cool t-shirts and hoodies and mugs and all that. Or click the join button, become a Mixbus TV member and up your mix and mastering game. Access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses, start to finish on many different genres, mastering courses, special videos, and a lot more. Let's see these techniques that are guaranteed to work on every mix. Start with leveling, forget everything else and solo the 808 snare lead vocals. What if it's a rock mix and I have electric guitars and bass and other stuff? <laughs> so maybe we should say the hip hop trap beat like mix. Get a good feel of where the bass is sitting. It should be the lowest among everything, but loud enough to get the vocals a bounce. I've, I even fail to understand how <laughs> these two are related. Like, what are you side chaining the bass or the vocals one another? How can the bass give the vocals a bounce? And okay, so this is a hip hop trap mix, right? It's got, we got 808 snare and lead vocals, and the bass is sitting the lowest among everything. Last time I checked, 808 is the loudest thing in the freaking mix. If there's one thing that we know, that 808 better bang in. And here should be the lowest among everything. But I have no idea how it would give the vocal a bounce. And then where's the snare? All right, I'll tell you where the snare is. Usually you want to start as a starting point with the snare and the lead vocal about at the same level. <laughs> Let's go. Level some more. Start soloing more instruments after you've done step one. Now, sound level is relative to each other. All right, so you do a rough mix. That's what it's called, a rough mix and gain stage. For example, if the bass is too much, you may have to turn down the kick instead of turning up the 808. That's a good advice. That's a good advice. Let's keep going and maybe it's, it's getting better. Clean up the mess. Why, why is your mix a mess already? Okay, let's read. At this point, you've defined your mix's depth and the sound levels are proportional. So you create depth in your mix just by moving, just doing a rough mix and moving levels. I wish it was that easy. No, you unfortunately don't create depth. You're, you, you didn't define your mix depth at all just by doing levels. I can promise you that. You just did levels, which is literally any assistant could do it in five minutes, rough mix level and gain staging. It's time to clean up the mud. You're not starting at a good, spot if you already have mod and you just did levels maybe pick better sounds in production use eq where necessary to carve out space for your instrument and remove bad frequencies bad frequencies what did they, they went to jail they robbed somebody what did those those frequencies did <laughs> to be bad there's no bad frequencies there's no bad frequencies there are some frequencies that it's common to have a build up like you know, I don't know, 6K or 250 and something like that. But there's no bad frequency. A bad frequency is when any frequency is too much or too little. Balance is everything. There's no such a thing as a bad frequency. What those frequencies did to you? They cheat on you? Why they're bad? Be gentle with it since instruments don't sound overly cued when they play in real life. What do you mean real life? I mean, this wouldn't be a bad advice. Don't use too much EQ because things sound over-processed. If it's not sound design, it's not pleasant. But what do you mean in, in real life? If, especially if we're talking about trap, hip hop, there's no real instruments. This is not that they are gonna be played in real life. Like it's real life where everybody plays your song through speakers, headphones, that's real life. There's, there's no real instruments if, in, in, for the most part in those kind of production. Now maybe if there were real instruments, you don't wanna disrupt the tone because 
when they are going live, they don't sound the same, but who cares? Lives sound different anyway than records for the most part. But everything is real life when your song gets played. Widen the mix. Here we go. Widen the mix. Your mix should be less muddy at this point, and if you listen carefully, you wouldn't be able to close your eyes and touch one sound. This is bad. This is bad. I have no idea what that means, but it's bad. That this, this, we know this at this point, because it's bad. You wouldn't be able to close your eyes and touch one sound. I really have no idea what that means. Let's keep going. Imagine humans are performing your song with real instruments on a concert stage, which again, it's very unlikely to happen with hip hop and trap and those genres, which is totally fine. That is the genre, but that kind of thinking is okay for bands like rock and metal and stuff like that and you want to position. There are genres in which reality doesn't matter. We create like think EDM, right? Electronic music. I mean, the, the space that you create, the, the picture, all right? That you want to give the audience, the listener, is not a real picture. Doesn't mean that is worse than a real band playing on stage, right? And actually I wanna say that's when you have more freedom because you can place things anywhere and in any way and move them around. It's like a beautiful thing. You don't really have this in trap and hip hop where things are for the most part dry in your face. Like the snare is usually right when the singer is. Like what do you imagine, the drummer like, <laughs> hitting the, the snare in front of the singer. Anyway, your task is to determine where they stand on stage. Use panning on this instrument to spread your mix across the wide stage. And again, uh, we can argue this all we want. I use and many other engineers use LCR panning, but some people use in between panning. They're both fine. The problem is you don't place people on stage, which means you create 3D space in your mix just with panning. You just place them left and right, and they, they are all in front of you, right? All in the same line. With panning alone, they're all in the same line. And then, yes, you can use volume, but it doesn't stop there. There's up and down, and there's depth. And depth is a very usually complicated matrix of invisible ambience, reverbs, delay, and EQ. That's how you create depth and 3D. And it's not just one, it's all these things. Use effects. There are two ways you can use effects, insert or send. That's a topic for another day, so stay tuned. I will definitely stay tuned. But avoid insert on lead vocal effects if you don't know what you're doing. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> Although, I don't like to use effects on insert. And by effects, I mean delays and reverbs. Simply because I want control, total control on the return of those effects. It would be kind of nice to tell people why, because otherwise <laughs> you scared the shit out of people like, oh my God, I used this effect in insert, what did I do? You didn't do anything. We use sands because we have more control over the effects. You might want to say that. And even if you know what you're doing, whatever that means, even more, you wouldn't use an effect in insert. You know, so sometimes it can be done, it can be done successfully, there are few reasons as to why one would prefer to use a reverb or a delay in insert. Not many times, but there are. Maybe I can make a video on it. But if you know what you're doing, you want total control on your effect return or the processing before hitting an effect. Use delays and reverb sparingly to make your mix professional. 60,000 BPM is the formula to set any time measured knob to snap to one fourth time. Pre-delay settings is the key to getting clean reverbs for vocals. Use the formula. So that's it. Use delays and reverb sparingly to make your mix professional. That's it. That's, that's what is gonna make your mix professional? Okay, well, first of all, most plugins, uh, delays and reverbs have a sync to tempo button so you can set, you know, the pre-delay of a reverb or the delays sync in tempo. You don't need a formula. But most important, why would you lock everything to one fourth? Like imagine a, a, a reverb with a one fourth pre-delay. That's like half of a bar. Why would you want to do that? Don't do it. Don't set your everything, your reverbs pre-delay especially, that far away. Because that's a delay before the reverb even comes in. Usually pre-delays in, in milliseconds, 5, 10, 15 milliseconds, not a fourth. 
uh, maybe you can have one throw delays or one main delays that is a one fourth in your mix, but also I usually have six different ones and same as full reverbs, if not more, if not 10. And syncing the pre-delay of a reverb to a track, it's, it can be a good starting point if you're not experienced, not a one fourth, but it's also a 50% chance. Sometimes we want to swing that pre-delay because it depends on, on the buildup of the reverb, on the density, on the early reflections. There's another probably 15 other variables that will make you perceive that reverb in a certain way and not just the pre-delay. Use a little bit of pre-delay or use, I want to say, pre-delay period will detach, so to speak, the, the, the reverb from the lead dry vocal and not drown or smear that vocal with reverb, uh, even if it's a low level. But sometimes you do want that. Sometimes you don't want the vocal just right up front, right there, and you want to use zero pre-delay reverb is actually, I consider it an effect on its own and it has a purpose, all right? So for the most part, we do use pre-delays. And actually we do use pre-delays, for example, if we want to use one reverb and send multiple elements, I do this with um, instrument very often. If you wanna use like, let's say the same room, right? For guitars or snare or whatever else in your mix to place them differently in that room, you use different pre-delays. That's a free trick right here. The one that is sent later in the matter of milliseconds to that river will appear a little behind the, the one that has a shorter pre-delay. But also the reasons because we use multiple reverbs, even if it's the same settings and the same room, because we want to EQ those returns different. So to create the professional mix that <laughs> doesn't just use delays and reverb sparingly, but is another million moves, which includes using probably the same reverb, EQ'd in different ways or EQ'd left and right uh, different, or one, you can take out the early reflection and so on. So there's a million other things. But what do I know? I will definitely try this. And if it works, it will save me a ton of time when mixing and I can use that time for something else. Let me know what you think in the comment down below. If you are entertained by this kind of videos and you want the series to continue, please send me all the stupid tips and charts and clips and we'll get it going. This is of course all in fun and games. If you like the video, please don't forget to leave a like and share. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next. Oh my God. See you next time. Hands on my